What's up my comic comrades? This past August, the long-awaited New Mutants live-action movie finally landed in theaters. And with the movie landing on digital and Blu-ray today, we're here to look at the characters who appear in the film and see how powerful each of them are in the comics. You'll of course need to buy New Mutants on digital or Blu-ray to see how each character in the movie matches up to their comic book counterpart. And speaking of buying the New Mutants, you could do exactly that by clicking our link in the description below. We also want to thank the New Mutants for sponsoring today's episode. So which New Mutant characters actually appear in the movie? Well, the story focuses on five mutants. Wolfsbane, Cannonball, Magic, Mirage or Moonstar, and Sunspot. The movie follows five young mutants who are being treated by Cecilia Reyes in a search facility as they safely discover their powers, or so they are told at least. When they all start to experience horrific hallucinations, they quickly realize they're not patients, but prisoners. So with that in mind, let's take a look at these mutants one by one and see how their power sets in the comics will compare to what we see in the movie. First, we have Rain Sinclair, aka Wolfsbane, played by actress Maisie Williams. Just like all but one of the new mutants in this movie, this Scottish born mutant was created by Chris Claremont and Bob McCloud. And Wolfsbane first appeared on the pages of a comic in the New Mutants graphic novel in 1982. Wolfsbane is a mutant metamorph, specifically with the ability to transform into a wolf. I know that just sounds like a werewolf, but it's different in that she controls the transformations to and from the wolf with concentration, rather than that transformation being triggered by a full moon. Because it's a controlled transformation, she can either operate in her human form, change completely into the wolf, or go hybrid revealing certain characteristics from both her human and wolf forms. But regardless whether she takes the hybrid or wolf form, she is able to retain most of her human intelligence in that state. While in her wolf form, Wolfbane possesses superhuman strength, enabling her to lift upwards of one ton. Her lichen form also grants her highly acute senses of hearing, smell, taste, and sight. In fact, she's been shown to be able to see in absolute darkness, making her an insanely formidable tracker and hunter. In addition to all of that, she also possesses enhanced speed far greater than that of even a professionally trained human athlete, as well as enhanced agility, balance and coordination. This is not someone you want chasing you. As for her fighting capabilities, Wolfsbane has massive beast-like claws at the end of each finger that are capable of shredding human flesh and bone, but can also cut through stronger substances like wood, stone, and even certain metals. And as you would imagine, her wolf form comes with a shiny set of razor-sharp teeth that would do catastrophic damage to most enemies she gets her hands on. But she isn't limited to beast-like fighting tactics because she is highly trained to hand-to-hand -hand combat by the likes of Wolverine, Cable, Nightcrawler, and others. And if she takes on any damage in combat, she has a really strong regenerative healing factor factor that allows her to sustain greater injury and keep fighting. All these powers and abilities make her a fierce adversary, even for other mutants as powerful as Wolverine, Sabretooth, Feral, Mystique, and more. Bottom line, she's a beast. You get it? She's a... You get it. The next new mutant to appear in the movie is Sam Gunthry, aka Cannonball, played by Charlie Heaton. Sam is a country boy from Kentucky who first appeared with Wolfbane in the New Mutants graphic novel in 1982. Out of all the mutants, Cannonball is one of the most interesting, not only because he's got a cool power set, but also because over the years in the comics, it's been hinted, specifically by Cable, that he might be a rare type of mutant known as an external, which if true would make him immortal. But as far as powers and abilities go, Cannonball possesses a unique thermal kinetic energy that allows him to launch himself like a rocket, or like he was shot out of a cannon, thus the name Cannonball. Originally, he didn't have the greatest control over his maneuverability or his ability to stop once he took off, but over time, he has perfected both and even learned to concentrate his power into focused energy blasts. Cannonball also has an incredibly powerful force field while in flight that essentially makes him invulnerable. So combined with strong combat training from Cable, Sam has been able to take on characters as powerful as Gladiator, who has near Superman-like powers. Next up is Ileana Rasputin, also widely known as Magic, who has played by Anya Taylor-Joy. The character was created by David Cockrum and Len Wein, and first appeared in Giant Size X-Men issue 1 in 1975. The most known thing about Magic is that she's the younger sister of Colossus. In fact, both of her older brothers are powerful mutants. But more important than who her brothers are, Ileana is a powerful sorceress and teleporter. And when I say powerful, I mean it could easily be argued that Magic is the most powerful in this group. Her teleporting abilities allow her to open transport portals called stepping disks. These glowing rings give her the ability to transport herself and others to other physical locations and even different places in time. She does have some limitations with this ability, but I'd say it's pretty dang useful. Then there's her magical powers. When Alanya was six years old, she was kidnapped by an evil sorcerer named Belasco, who took her and trapped her in a dimension known as Limbo for many years. There's a lot that happens around this part of her backstory, but to sum it up, over the course of several years, Belasco turned more than half of her soul into Bloodstone, which gave her an immense capacity for dark magic. Over time, she grew in power and inevitably escaped Limbo, eventually becoming powerful enough to return to Limbo, then harness her own 
life force to manifest a soul sword and use it to defeat Belasco, becoming the new Sorceress Supreme of Limbo. I'll also add that her soul sword does appear in the movie, which is dope. In the comics, she has developed into such a powerful sorceress that even Doctor Strange once said she had the potential for great feats of manipulating time on a wide scale. That is especially true after her powers were altered by the Phoenix Force in the all-new X-Men run. All in all, she's no joke. Moving on to the fourth new mutant to appear in the film, we have Roberto da Costa, aka Sunspot, who was played by actor Henry Zaga in the movie. Sunspot was also created by Claremont and McCloud and introduced in comics in the New Mutants graphic novel as well. Like Magic, he's another new mutant with a significant power set. Basically, he has the ability to absorb solar energy and store it in his cells. He then can channel that solar energy into a number of abilities, including flight, superhuman strength, speed, durability, concussive solar energy blasts, and fire slash heat immunity. He also possesses thermokinesis, which is the ability to project and absorb heat, which allows him to dramatically lower the temperature of his surroundings and even manipulate the body heat and others. In addition to his mutant powers and abilities, Roberto is also the son of a wealthy businessman and grew to become a very successful businessman in his own right. At one point, even buying out the criminal organization AIM, acquiring all of their technology and research. Altogether, Sunspot would be a solid add to any team. But the final New Mutant and one of the central characters in the New Mutant movie is Danielle Moonstar, aka Mirage, played by actress Blue Hunt. Known by friends as Danny Mirage is another original member of the New Mutants created by Claremont and McCloud, and first appeared alongside Sunspot, Wolfsbane, Cannonball, and others in the 1982 New Mutants graphic novel. Danny is a Native American whose grandfather, Black Eagle, was an old friend of Professor X. So when Danny started displaying mutant abilities, Black Eagle asked Charles to help her. Danny resented the idea, but after her grandfather was murdered by Donald Pierce, she went to Xavier's school to honor him. Moonstar has a relatively limited power set, but her primary ability is powerful illusion casting. Essentially, she's able to harness a person's greatest fear or desire using her psionic energy and manifest it as a hyper-real three-dimensional illusion. The illusions are so strong that the victim whose fears or desires are being manifested will see it as 100% real, although everyone around them will just see it as a hologram. Initially, Danny was unable to control her illusion projecting powers and would draw on fears and emotions without consciously trying to do so. But over time, with the help of Charles Xavier, she's been able to master it into a weapon. Mirage has also shown the ability to connect with certain animals empathically, meaning she could feel and sense what the animal is thinking or feeling without communicating with it telepathically. She has also developed her psionic powers enough to be able to focus the energy into arrows that she can fire at opponents stunning them and even shocking their nervous system. Overall, she's an interesting character with a unique power set and one that may or may not play a significant role in the New Mutants movie. But that does it for our look at how powerful each New Mutant is in the comics. How does each character's powers and abilities come into play in the actual movie? Well, that you're gonna have to see for yourself. So go click the link in the description below and buy the New Mutants for yourself on digital DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K. And after you've watched it, come back here and let us know how you think the characters matched up with their comic book counterparts. It's always fun to see how different filmmakers and storytellers translate interesting characters like these from page to the screen, so be sure to pick it up and join the discussion. And before we wrap up, we just want to give another big thank you to the New Mutants for sponsoring today's episode. And just like that, my comic comrades, that brings today's episode to a close. But if you like today's New Mutants episode, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. It always helps us out. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.